Yeah, people, blog time. Um, that barbel what I just had, had outweighed, it surprised me because it looked a lot bigger. Uh, by the time I took the net off, it was about £8.5. Unbelievable fight, the rod absolutely tore off. I was only right next to the bloody rod. By the time I got to the rod, it must have took, got to have been 80 yards of line. Easily. Unbelievable, honestly. I mean, I, I was, I'll show you where the rods was. Right, the rods are here, this rod was fishing about here, this right rod, by the time I got to the rod it was down past this bush down here and it gave me a right battle from there all the way up to here and I mean a right battle, I had to really tighten up on the clutch and the line was singing but I had to or otherwise I weren't going to get it in and then as soon as I got it to here from there to there it came in dead easy. It had a little bit of a battle with me down here, but oh god, unbelievable! To say that was only eight pound five. Looked a lot bigger. I thought it was about ten, to be honest with you. But um, I mean, the thing is, I've got twelve pound line on, and them hook lengths what I'm using, they're really strong. It's twelve pound hook length, but it's only twenty-five mil diameter, whereas my other twelve pound main line is thirty-three. So, at least I know the up lengths and that one I'm using are bang on. I mean, bloody hell, my me, me landing nets. What's my landing net? 26 inch round pan net. Bloody hell, if I got a 13 pounder, I'd get it in the net. But I'll tell you something now, I, I, if it was any bigger than 13 pound, I'd struggle getting it in that pan net. I'm going to have to get a 30 inch pan net. Um, they're just really long fish. Really, really long. Super fit, absolutely super fit, unbelievable. Um, but like I say, the pan net that I've got down here, look, and that's bloody that is a big, big net. Do you get what I mean? I mean, I've had carp up to 20 odd pound in that before, and I've got a slug look, caught itself, trapped itself in my net, trying to get a uh, It'll get out eventually, because if I try and pull it, it'll just swell up again. But like I say, I'm going to have to get a 30 inch one. Um, I mean, it, I've never had no problems before, but the thing is, with the length of the fish that's coming out, I'm going to have to get a 30 inch one. I think Gardner do a 30 inch pan net. The, the reason I like these Corum nets is I've got a couple of these in different sizes, because they're really strong nets. You know, some of the nets what you buy are shit now, nah, absolutely shit. So, well, like I say, it's Tuesday morning anyway. So, I got up this morning, didn't sleep very well last night. My foot was absolutely giving me some stick, it was. But, um, at the end of the day now, nah, at least I know the spot's where I want to be. I hope that's not that rower again. There's a rower right up here. And not long before I had that fish, yeah, he was rowing across the other side of the river and he was along here, I heard him coming from up here and he went all the way along here, right, and shot off up river and he knew I was here because he saw me sat having my cup of coffee under my umbrella and Sky was barking from behind me because he looked up, so he knew I was here and then the best thing about it is he rode downstream, he came back up, and then all of a sudden I heard him, and he was down here, he was here, no warning, no nothing, and he knew I was there, I looked straight at him, and he completely ignored me, the fucking wanker, and I just got to my rods, just got to my rods, and put my rods down in the water, I said, you nearly took, you're going through me fucking lines, and he just looked at me, so I put the rods down, I put the rods back on the rest and I turned round to him, I don't know if he heard me or not because he was rowing away, I said you will do because I've seen your face and when I do see you again you'll get some of that unbelievable, if that weren't done on purpose I do not know but I'll tell you something now, he comes anywhere along here now 
and he's going to go a massive ball of ground bait straight in his face. I swear. But I reckon he's clicked on what I'm going to do because he's seen, he's seen, mate. And he's gone back upstream now. He's disappeared again. Look, he was coming down here. He was coming down to here. But now he's turned round and he's gone right the way back up there. That silly old twat. If that weren't done on purpose, I don't know what was. What is wrong with these people? If I was in a, if I was in a rowboat and seen somebody like that, yeah, common sense, they come across people that's fishing all the time and they know that the lines ain't very far out. So why do they have to come in that close? You know, we weren't that close in when he was on the other side, so why does he have to do it on this side? Because he's doing it on fucking purpose. Because he's a wanker. Excuse my language, people, but they really do piss me off, they do. I tell you, it's about time somebody taught them a lesson and dragged them out of the sodding boat and gave them a slap. You know, I'm not promoting violence or anything, but Jesus, it winds you up. And then again, five minutes later after that, and then I've got to add that fish, so I don't know. But anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the camera on charge, but... That's three barbel I've had last night. And I've had bream last night. I didn't film them or photograph them. I think I had five or six big bream between about five pound and eight pound. And then I've had about, I don't know, four or five smaller bream, you know, skimmers. You know, so if I put maggot rigs in that, I'd probably catch skimmers all day, but I'm not that bothered. I want to try and see how many barbel I can get out. I have got maggots and stuff with me, but I'll probably have a day where I fish just to see how many bream I can get. But it's the barbel I mainly want. I want to see if I can try and get some of the bigger ones out. But it's definitely three different barbel I've had out now anyway. But it's very, very snaggy, the swim that I'm in. There's a lot of snags, there's a lot of, there's a lot of light streamer reed clumped up with other re weed in the water. I think that's why there's so many barbel in this bit. And it's coming just off of the bend. So the bend's come round from round this way and it hits here. So basically everything, all the food, everything from round the bend is travelling along here. And that's why I've got my rigs out there. Into the main one's just off the main flow and one's into the main flow. So that I'm baiting both them areas all the time. You know, and I keep moving them in and out, the feeder, so that it's getting a good steady stream of bait. But what I've done is I've mixed it. I've got some old uh, casters and emp and pellet and, and stuff in there. I've mixed it all up with some brown crumb to get rid of it because it's come out of the freezer and it's defrosted. So I'm going to boil this afternoon and when it just dies off a bit, I'm going to boil that in so there's that, that bucket's in there and gone in. So that by tonight, hopefully, it would have brought a few fish into that area and let them have a good feed. And then hopefully, it should draw more barbel in for tonight. It should do. There's even bits of luncheon meat in there. So, but what I should do is I should get this balled out soon. Recast my rod. Get this balled out. And then I think I'm going to have a bit of a tidy up for now and get a couple of rigs tied ready for tonight. And then have a bit of a chill out this afternoon for an hour or so because I didn't get, like I said, I didn't get much sleep last night. Right, I'll catch up in a bit anyway, boys and girls. Tight lines for now anyway, tight lines.